Hi there and welcome to this learn every feature and function of Yuhi's Diva. Diva is an absolutely beautiful sounding synthesizer, probably as analog sounding as it gets in my opinion when it comes to software synthesizers. We're going to run through the whole synth throughout this course. We'll begin by looking at the top panel of Diva, the control panel and also look at how we can set up MIDI controllers to control parameters in Diva. We'll then look at patch browsing, storing and loading and then we'll get stuck into some of the synthesis options we have in Diva as we can start effectively building our own synthesizer using the various different oscillator, filter and envelope setups. So we're going to have a look at the oscillator section, the feedback section, the filter section and the envelope section. We'll then turn our attention towards the bottom panel of Diva looking at the LFO section and then looking at the tuning, voicing and amplifier and pan section. We'll have a good look at the arpeggiator and how we can use that to create our own arpeggiator sounds. We'll take a look at the outstanding sounding effects that we have in Diva, the two effect slots. And then we'll get a little bit deeper looking at the modifications tab and how we can set up extra modulators in the modifications tab. Also the trimmers and scope for extra voice tuning and detuning control and also having a look at the frequency analysis of the sounds we're creating. So we'll begin in this video by taking a look at the control panel of Diva. So this top panel of Diva is known as the control bar. Start over on the left here, we have a save button, so we can click that, we can just very quickly save a preset, and we can add some preset description and author name and what have you. We'll look at patch browsing, storing, a bit more detail in the next video. Uh, and then we have this MIDI activity, just indicates when we're receiving, Diva is receiving MIDI notes. And then we have this data display, so, if I go ahead and load a patch in there and, and tells us which patch we've got loaded in this display and go back to this main and once we've loaded a patch, so if we go to the polysymps here and I load a patch, load this keys flutes patch in there and I go back to main and start tweaking that. This panel will now well, it jumps back to tell me which patch is loaded, but when you start tweaking stuff, say the cutoff frequency, it gives me this frequency readout here as well, or if I go to the resonance, and, or like the detune, it's quite useful. So it tells me like, say with this oscillator, I'm going up an octave there, I'm going to plus 12 semitones, and, you know, plus 13, 14, and then if you leave it for a second, you don't touch anything, the, the readout of the patch that you have loaded will show up again. And then you can, if you go to patches and you want to start browsing through various different patches in this polysynth category, but you want to start tweaking in the main synth area and start playing, say, a chord. Very quickly jump to a different polysynth in that category. You can just use these right or left buttons. Or you can hit this drop down and scroll through and this drop down is just going to show me all the patches from the polysynth category. We go back to patches here and so go to the bass category. Now it will show me all the patches in the bass category and then I can start scroll scrolling through. And to the right of that, we have undo and redo buttons, which is, say, really nice. So if I load up, um, say, a sound like this lead sound, and go, right, let's start tweaking this. I tweak the cut off. Change the attack, maybe change this filter envelope. Push up a bit of resonance. And go, oh, I quite like that, but... Um, so I want to undo some of those edits that I've made there. We actually have an undo button here, so I can click this, keep clicking it, and if you notice, watch what everything, what I, all the edits that I made in the synth there, it's actually starting to undo all of those. Every part that I changed, it's undoing it, or to the point where it actually loads up the previous synth. 
and you actually have unlimited undos and redo. So say if you go, I actually quite liked what I did to that synth now, I can actually redo all those changes. <laughs> and redo it back to its state where I had it. So unlimited undo and redo, and it's literally every tweak that I make in here, we'll read this as an undo and redo step. So you go, oh, I changed all the oscillators there, undo, 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 get it back to how it was before. I'll go, I actually quite like that. Just redo that, which is great when you have a patch and you get something you really like, and then you start fiddling around with so many different parameters and you change it and you don't like how you've edited it and how it's sounding now if you can't remember exactly what you did to get it to where it was you can just start undoing or redoing unlimited so really nice feature uh, to the right of this we have a multi-core button so if you have a newer computer uh, you can engage the different cpu cores on your computer and this comes into play if you were using a very stacked up synth sound. We'll get into this panel down here in one of the later videos, but Diva can be very CPU hungry and uh, it's a trade off because the sound is amazing. But uh, when you're using poly synths and you're stacking up these voices, it can get quite CPU hungry. So it's not going to be effective on this because this is a mono bass sound. But if you load up like a poly synth, and start stacking up these voices like this. And using the voice stack there. You've got a very big sound, but it's using up some CPU. If you have a newer computer, you can engage this multi-core button and it starts distributing the different voices across different cores, across different CPU cores. And then we have a master volume for the synth. to the right here and then this Yuhi badge. If I click this, I can visit yuhi.com. I can use a guide and it takes me to uh, where the manual is stored and the other bits and bobs about the synth here. Uh, and that's stored on your hard drive and it just takes you right there. Uh, and then we've got support forum and social media Yuhi pages and then to the right here, we have this uh, MIDI button here. So let's load up uh, an initialized patch here. And so I've got this init mini mono loaded. And I've also got a machine Mark II controller here. I hit this MIDI button. I can actually just very quickly set up some MIDI controls here. So say if I want to control a cut off frequency, I just click on that and then I just move my controller and I've signed my first controller, rotary controller on my machine mark two, I've assigned to the cutoff frequency. Click on this emphasis, which is the resonance, and then move my second controller, and maybe click on the third one. Here, this LFO modulation, assign that. Uh, maybe the attack, assign that to my fourth controller. And you can go and set up a little MIDI map here, various different MIDI controllers very quickly, very easily, and then I can just hit close, and that, that's all stored in there. So I've got the emphasis control, the cutoff frequency, the attack. You know, and if you want to go and edit those, I mean, I could go back in here and uh, add some more MIDI controls. I can go to this second button here, and I can see the MIDI controls I've set up, so I can just get rid of these if I want to. Uh, and Or I can add more in here, or I can delete all of them. And you could also change this here. So at the moment, I've got my first controller, well, the first rotary controller on my machine, Mark II, uh, which is read as for controller 14 here. I could change this to in here. So rather than doing it on this section here, uh, I can actually go and do it in here and just click on this. And then I could go, actually, I want this controller to control the rate of LFO1. And then with that set up, now if I close this, if you look at the rate of LFO1 is now assigned to that controller and is no longer assigned to the cutoff frequency. And then at the bottom here, we have some other preferences. So the mouse wheel raster on or off. Uh, we have the default size. The moment it's set to 100%, but we can change this here. 
to uh, something like that. If you have a very uh, large large display on your computer, you can actually do this. If you click anywhere in this synth, right click, and I can start changing the size of the synth here. You know to fit. You know if you have a few instances, because a hundred percent on my MacBook Pro, it pretty much fills the whole screen. So if you wanted a slightly smaller display there you know uh, or if you have a much bigger display then you can just do that very quickly on the synth there but then you can also do it in this panel here and uh, gamma neutral so brighter or darker so you can change the appearance of the synth there got this oscilloscope it's on an eco so if I go to this scope here close this button Go to scope. We're going to look at scope later on in one of the videos properly, but see the readout there. It's on eco, so I can change this in this section here. Go to glow, and it kind of changes the uh, oh, wind. It changes the graphics there, you know. But I'm guessing as it goes up from eco, it's going to be using up more CPU, so which is probably why it's set by default on eco. We have this text anti-aliasing, so at the moment it's on, so you notice the text is uh, quite clean. If I take this off, text changes, especially if you were going to go change the size there, and you can see here the text on all of these uh, parameters. So that on, it's a little bit cleaner. Uh, Minimise that again. Uh, and then we have some stuff about the latency there where it recommends just to leave the base, base latency on 16 samples. So, so that's a little look there at this control bar and the MIDI controls there. Come and check us in the next video where we're going to be getting stuck into patch browsing, loading, storing and the various different options we have in here for calling up different patches. All right, cheers.